Hi everyone, it's Nat from Studio Hacks here, and I've had some subscribers uh, asking me recently uh, if I can recommend some good free VST plugins, some synth plugins that will work in programs like Ableton Live and GarageBand, Pro Tools, and Fruity Loop Studio, and things like that. So I'm going to be doing a, a series of videos where I'm going to feature a free VST synth in each one, and I'm going to have a, a bit of a look and show you how you can use that uh, in your project. So in this first edition of the best free VST instrument plugins for 2020, I want to show you one that I've been using for a while. It's called Dext, and it's an FM synthesizer, so fre frequency modulating synthesizer. And uh, it's multi-platform, so you can get it on uh, Mac, Mac and Windows. It's available as a VST um, and audio unit. For any keyboard nerds out there, it's modeled closely on the oscillators in a Yamaha DX7, which is a vintage synth. So I'm going to, I've got a fresh installation of Ableton Live. And I've also got a, uh, this is a, a new Mac Mini. So I want to set up um, some of some new instruments and things like this. So I've, I'll show you how to install it and then I'll show you how to use it. So you'll download it as a zip and then you should get a download right here, Dext. I'm going to double click on it and you'll probably get, um, if you're using a later version of the Mac operating system, something that says it can't be installed because of it's not uh, an official um, Mac program. So to fix that, all you have to do is go to your security and privacy. And when it's blocked a um, under general, when it's blocked a um, program from opening, you'll see right here, we can just sell, select open anyway. And I know this is a trusted program. I know it's not spam or malware or anything like that. I've been using it for a while. So I'm going to install the standalone and the VST and the audio unit. The audio unit means that I can uh, boot it up in GarageBand. And um, the VST means I'll be able to use it in Ableton Live. So now I'm going to close Ableton Live and reopen it. I could have rescanned the VSTs, but this is just as quick. Okay, because I don't have anything else open. Okay, so in Ableton Live, you should now find this under your plugins. Um, the reason I can't see it is this is a fresh installation of Ableton Live. I need to go to where it says plugins and I need to be able to use audio units, VST in system and custom. Uh, no, actually I'll just use the system folder and use the VST three. Let's do that rescan now and see if it happens to find. There it is under plugins under VST. And you also notice there's an audio units version. I'll just use this VST. So to load that up on a track, you can select a MIDI track. I'm going to jump over to the arrange view. Um, one of these MIDI tracks, you can just drag it onto the track header, or I could have double clicked it there. And this may look complicated, but there's a really quick and easy way to get going. So you can listen to the sounds by just clicking here. Or if you have a MIDI keyboard set up, let me quickly switch over to a, oh no, you can already hear this, beautiful. So that's got a um, arpeggiator on it, but you can, so I'm just touching my MIDI keyboard here. So if you have a MIDI keyboard hooked up, you can go down the bottom here, right here where it says say again, and you can simply start going through all of their lists of presets. Let's have a listen to this one. So 
somewhere down here I have a foot pedal. Here we go. Now, if it's not going low enough on your keyboard, one really little handy tip that I like to tell people is under the MIDI effects right here, I select uh, the pitch plugin and then you can grab a plus 12, plus 24 or minus 12. Let's double click on the minus 12 and it will add it'll push the whole keyboard down 12 and I can always turn this on and off down here. So it's got some really good sounds in it for a free synth. This is like um, an 80s style sort of, if you're making synth wave or anything like that. Um, that's really great if you're doing any 80s nostalgia. This is a fantastic synth to grab. So we've got some percussive synths. So I would suggest using these presets as a starting point, but I would always subtly alter the sounds so that we don't run the risk of sounding like everyone else who's using this free instrument. So I know this looks pretty complicated, but basically each one of these square blocks is just uh, an oscillator with an envelope. These little uh, panels here are the envelopes, if you know anything about synthesis. And we can start changing these envelopes uh, by mucking around with uh, the the levels and the rates here. So let's just start playing it. I'm going to start playing it and I'll and I'll change some of these envelopes and I'll just see what it starts doing to that sound. So that's starting to change the tone of it. And some of the other things that we can muck around with on the global panels down the bottom are uh, the cutoff and the resonance. These have to do with the filters. I'm not going to do a super in-depth tutorial on this instrument at the moment. This is more an introduction to the instrument. I will be creating another video where I'm going to go right into more of the technical and specific details of how we can edit these different oscillators, create our own sounds from scratch. That'll be a bit of a longer and more technical video, and I will leave the link to that in the description. This is more an introduction to the instrument, just showing you what it can do, and a few ways of how you can start using it in your digital audio workstation. So if you get a sound that you really like and you want to keep it, you simply click store right here, and you can give it your own name here. So Nats Soft Synth 1. And then uh, you can store this, um, you know, in the same session folder here, or you can save it to an external place of your choosing. So sometimes it can be nice. Let me do that again um, to save them on an external hard drive or something like that. If you're going to be switching around computers. Um, for the moment, I'm just going to save this to the system drive. And then you'll see now I've got this is the that was the default synth there but now number one it's added that as my synth so if you don't have a MIDI keyboard uh, we can actually use uh, under the MIDI effects we can grab an arpeggiator here this is um, it's got some presets on the arpeggiator but I'm just going to grab the stock standard arpeggiator and then what we want to do is go to, we need to create a blank MIDI region. So I'm going to select an area on that track, right click and select insert MIDI clips. Shift command M is the shortcut for that. Um, to be able to hear what we're doing as we type it in, uh, I also need to, there's a little set of headphones somewhere around here, right here. So I'm going to pop in a chord. I'm going to hit the B key 
So I can draw in a few notes. I'm going to do a C major chord. So I'm not hitting those notes bang on there. So if you hit B, you can draw in a note. And then I'm going to make those notes a bit longer. So this is kind of just making a chord. Then we can go over to the effects over on the right hand side and add some of the delay and reverb by clicking in here and pushing up. That can always make synth sound a lot cooler. Let's make it a minor chord. I'm going to make this a bit longer. And then I'm going to double click on the track that it's on again and go back to this arpeggiator. And you'll see that there's um, a bunch of options that we've got here in the key of C. Um, we can change the rate. And we can change the steps. We can change um, the order. So it's just straight up, but we can go up and down. We can do a random order. Okay, so that's um, one way that we can start using those synths without a MIDI keyboard. And then we can add in our own chords by doing a copy and a paste. Command C and Command C. And then I'll do another copy and paste. And then we'll repeat that pattern. Let's just go to the drums. And we'll, we'll grab a kit. We'll drag it on to number two. We can do the same thing. We can make a beat by right clicking and inserting a MIDI clip. Really, really quick and simple. Um, Let's just let's just keep it simple for the moment. So I'm just going to keep I'm just going to make a really short loop here. Let's find the hats, the hi hats. And I'm going to copy and paste these. One really uh, cool thing that I like to do sometimes is right click on the track and duplicate it. And then I can separate those hi hats from the rest. So I'll delete the hi hats on this first one here. And then on the bottom one, I'll delete everything except for the hi hats. And then I'll put some delay on the hi-hats and it makes it sound like it's double time. And then I'm going to copy and paste those um, clips there. And then we can just create a quick and easy bass line by right clicking on the first instrument and duplicating it. And now I'm going to delete all the top notes. Uh, 
and I'm going to take off the arpeggiator because it would have copied that across. And now I'm going to go in back into the Dext uh, instrument, which is right here. And I'm going to see if there's a, some kind of a bass um, in here somewhere. So I've found number 26 is a bit of a wobble bass. Let's see if that works. I'm going to solo this track. So it's a little bit high. So what I can do is double click on the track and grab all of those and just drag them down a whole um, octave. Let's listen to that with the rest of the composition. There. So one other thing that my ears are telling me is I don't like how bright that top synth is. So we can just double click on that and we can go to audio effects and grab an equalizer. The EQ eight is really good. And then double click in the black space there to make it bigger. And we can just pull out some of those top frequencies there. I'm going to change the frequency type to a uh, low pass filter. So I can, that's just that little downward facing one there. Or we could just in a click on number eight there to enable the one they've already got. So you can see just using some of the stock drum sounds in Ableton Live and just a couple of those presets that we've tweaked a little bit on that Dext plugin, you can start making, you know, really nice songs with free plugins. Um, and I've used them on, I've used Dext on plenty of songs, especially if you like start layering it up, um, you duplicate it and then you use the exact same sound. Uh, the exact same performance, but then you choose a different sound. I'll just pick a random one. Let me pick a different one. There we go. And we can pan that to the left and pan the other one to the right. And now we've got starting to do some layering. So there you go, that is Dext. That is one of my favorite little free synth plugins. I'll be doing a bunch of these videos where I dig up some really cool uh, free plugins and just show you how they work. And then uh, some of them I might dive a little bit deeper and give you a really in-depth tutorial on as well. If you want that, make sure you pop in a comment and I'll, I'll do that for this one. Um, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time. <laughs>